The more structure you have in your business, the more creative time you have to really think about ideas, to design your collection, and to spend more time in your zone of genius, which is designing jewelry. You are listening to Thrive by Design, business, marketing, and lifestyle strategies for your jewelry brand to flourish and thrive. Let's get started. Welcome to Thrive by Design, episode number 91. Hey there, it's Tracy Matthews here, the Chief Visionary Officer of Flourish and Thrive Academy, a jewelry designer just like you, and I'm excited to be here today to talk about the business of jewelry. You know, I love talking about business. I love jewelry. I love designing jewelry, and I love being here. So it's always a pleasure to be here. So cool thing is, is that many of you over the past couple of weeks have probably been joining in for our Pretty Little Profits Challenge, the five-day jewelry promotion challenge. I have a hard time saying jewelry sometimes. <laughs> in fact, it's so funny. People ask me what I do, and I said, I'm a jewelry designer. And they're like, a jewelry designer? I'm like, no, a jewelry designer. I don't know why that word is so hard for me to say, even though I've been in the industry forever. So today I want to talk to you about the seven stages to accelerate your jewelry business success. So we've identified seven stages in jewelry business or in the business of jewelry. And I'm going to uncover those today. And I'm really excited to talk about this topic because I think a lot of times as we are, you know, deciding to potentially start a business or grow a business, you know, we might be at different stages in business and we're kind of unclear about where we are. And when we don't have clarity about specifically where we are and what we need to do next, What ends up happening is we end up making a lot of mistakes. We end up spending a lot of money that we don't need to spend. We end up wasting a lot of money. And then we try testing things that maybe don't end up being super successful. And that, you know, really bruises our ego. It bruises our confidence. And sometimes it can be a little bit heartbreaking. I don't know if you feel that, but I know that in my career, I felt that many times. And, you know, over at Flourish and Thrive, you know, I feel like we've really, you know, launched into this industry about five years ago uh, as jewelry business coaches and your success mentors. And when I started Flourish and Thrive with Robin, you know, I really wanted to create this sense of community. And shortly after we started Flourish and Thrive, you know, our motto sort of like rose up <laughs> community and collaboration over competition, which is something that we really stand by today. And the community aspect of what we do at Flourish and Thrive Academy is really the most powerful thing. And I feel like when we came onto the scene, we were kind of disruptors because number one, jewelry industry was super tight-lipped. No one ever wanted to share secrets. None of my peers would ever share how they got to their levels of success. They would never share vendors. They would never share design ideas or techniques. I mean, not that you'd be designing the same thing, but you know, like sometimes there are hacks that you can do that can shorten the process. Or, you know, for instance, like they wouldn't share manufacturers. There were many years when I was trying to find someone to help me produce in different ways. And I'd ask people how they were doing it. And they'd say, oh, I can't tell you. Sorry, that's my secret. (laughs) And, you know, there, you know, there was this old school way of hiring consultants. You know, I hired consultants back in the day and it was amazing. It changed my business forever. And I'm not saying that one-on-one isn't great, but I've just seen the power and the power of group and how this, you know, either small group or a medium group or even a bigger group can really impact how you view your business because of the different, you know, sort of sides of the coin that you get and the different perspectives that are presented. It also helps you see things that you can't see because, you know, if you're just working one-on-one with someone, it might be just your opinion and their opinion, not a kaleidoscope of opinions, which I think in a lot of cases is really beneficial. I'm not going to say in all cases, but in a lot of cases, it's really beneficial because it helps you get clear on the direction that you want to go into, and then also gives you perspective on different ways that you can approach and look at your business. And this really came to fruition with me when I decided to close my first business. So a lot of you have heard this story. You know, I was probably at what we call stage five or six in our the seven stage uh, process that I'm going to tell you or the seven stages of jewelry business success that I'm going to share with you momentarily. And I was like, I felt like I was imploding. I wasn't happy. I was miserable with the direction of my business. And I gave myself permission with the support of my mentor and the people who I was coaching with at that time, you know, geez, it's nearly 10 years ago now, which doesn't even seem that long to change my mind and move into a different direction that started to support my 
my idea of business success because it had changed. And this is something that's really important to remember that there is no cookie cutter way to specifically run a business. There is no cookie cutter path to creating a jewelry brand or a jewelry business, but there are stages that you need to kind of follow and a core path that you need to follow in order to get to that next level of success. So as you guys who have participated in our Pretty Little Profits Challenge, you probably saw that, you know, there was kind of like a step-by-step system on how you can run a successful jewelry promotion. You start by keeping it super simple and then you add your own flair to it. And then that like sort of little bit of flair that you give to it can be expanded on. And then you can start adding on more complicated, you know, promotional tactics or marketing tactics or sales tactics that are going to like, you know, 10x your exposure and your results. So you do this in business, you know, when you're approaching something new, everything is approached sort of at the step-by-step process. And then as you start to master that and become really good at it, you can add additional layers and really, as my friend Jen Kemp likes to say, double down on what's working, which I think is really important for all of us to remember. It's like that this process and journey of growing a brand is really individualized and has to do with what works for us. And I think that sometimes people in this industry get lost and think that there's only one way. And I know that I felt, you know, sort of closed in or dialed in by what the norms of the industry were when I, you know, was growing my brand and really building a business. The only way to really do it was to build a brand selling wholesale. That was the way that you were recognized as a successful designer. That's what determined that you were a success in business. And I don't think that's true. I don't think it's even important anymore in growing a successful brand, depending on what your goals are. You know, if if you have lifestyle goals, those might precede, you know, having brand exposure in a place like Neiman Marcus or the Sundance catalog, you know, because when you get into stores like that, there is a lifestyle you know, positioning sometimes are change that needs to happen in order for you to keep up with not only volume, but the inventory that's required to create and, you know, cash float and, you know, net terms and all that stuff. It's a different, it's a totally different game. But then for some people, you know, that might be exciting and the way that they feel fulfilled. So, you know, I mentioned this because there really is no one way to grow a jewelry business. And you probably have heard me say this millions of times, but people forget sometimes that there isn't, just one way. But there is a proven step-by-step kind of direction you need to move into. And that's sort of what I want to talk about today. And those are the seven stages to accelerate your jewelry business success, because I've been working on, you know, this idea for over a year as I sort of like evaluate like my own process and analyze sort of the designers that we've worked with over the past year to see like how they've sort of like moved step by step and grown their businesses and gotten to their definition of success, which looks very differently to everyone. And I'm going to present an opportunity or share with you something today that is really a disruptor in the jewelry brand or jewelry industry, I should say, to the way that business has been looked at. You know, these days, I don't know that old school jewelry consulting works in the way that it used to because so much stuff is changing. There's so many different ways to grow a brand. It's not just about getting into stores, as I mentioned earlier. It's about building a brand that's sustainable, that works for you, that gets you the kind of exposure that is important to you. And for some of you, that might be selling in stores, but it's not going to be for everyone. But some of you can have probably a much more successful business not selling to stores and building an online presence or developing a couture private you know, commission business where you're working off the radar, just one-on-one with customers, either in your local community or, you know, beyond. There's so many different ways that you can be a success and be well-known and, or not even well-known, whatever is important to you, but still have a brand that supports your vision of success. And a lot of these platforms and strategies and the way traditional consultants approach business, yes, they have very important business information as far as like, you know, the financials and that sort of stuff goes, but they think in this old school mindset, like here's the way you need to do it. You need to write a 30 page business plan and get financing. And, you know, before you start, you have to be crystal clear on everything before you put your brand out there. And um, well, sure, that's important probably for 1% of the percentage of jewelry designers and makers out there, because not everyone is trying to get into a Neiman Marcus on their first launch out of the gate. They're trying to approach their business a little bit of a different way. And I can tell you from personal experience that writing a 30 page business plan in most cases, is a waste of time for most of us. I am not saying that you don't need to plan for your business. That is 
not what I'm saying here, but I was at um, an event a couple of summers ago. I was invited to like co-mentor with someone who I really respect in the industry, like a hundred gajillion times respect this person. And we were sitting there and, you know, we had really opposing views on, you know, business planning, because I don't believe that from someone who has built my own business as a designer, that a business plan ever helped me grow my business at all. I wrote a 30 page business plan. When I started, I spent six months writing that business plan. I never once looked at it and or used it when I was growing my business. And I think for a lot of us, you know, mapping out five, years in advance, isn't that helpful? Because if you are like mapping out these ginormous goals and you haven't even sold anything, you know, it's, it's limiting and debilitating because your mind's not there yet and doesn't believe that you can actually reach it. So I highly recommend that most of us are going to be creating like a working business plan and really understanding where we are in business and look at our business plan in shorter time periods and to make sure that we are, you know, definitely following a plan and that we have goals and we have ways to measure our success and metrics in place and all that stuff. But the, that the plan is step-by-step and much more attainable and more about taking action steps as opposed to, you know, creating something that is some pie in the sky that you're never going to follow. And this is where our Flourish and Thrive Academy is really different from a lot of what's being taught out there. I don't, I don't, I think that actionable business plans are really important that are very short to the point and can get you to the next stage of success, but also meet you exactly where you are in business because that's really the key indicator. You want your plan to meet you where you are in business so that you can actually feel inspired by it and and take action on it, which I think is the most important. I could keep talking about this stuff for hours, but I don't want to bore you guys. So (laughs) you probably hear me if, uh, you know, in our communities talking about this as well. But We've identified as I've been through this process of really like dialing in on these, on, you know, the core path, the core success path to a jewelry business. Like, what does it really take? And, you know, what are the seven stages? And, you know, it's interesting because like when I was first developing this concept, I was thinking, oh, maybe there's three stages or maybe there's five, but I really believe that there are seven stages. And I sort of got to this by not only observing uh, other designers that we mentor, But also observing, you know, and, you know, sort of being nostalgic and like sort of tracing my steps as a designer and starting two different jewelry businesses in the past 20 years and the process that I went through. Now, the second time around, you know, you're probably going to sort of like really escalate quickly through the first couple of stages because you already have done that before. It's not something that takes a lot of time. So before, without any further ado, I kind of want to dive into this and talk a little bit more about the seven stages in business and sort of why following this core path of success will really help you accelerate your business growth. Because part of the reason why we get tied back, you know, years down the road is because we skipped a step or we're trying to go from stage two to stage five right away. And we haven't built that infrastructure in between that really helps support the business growth. So I am all about dreaming big guys. You know, you know me, I am going to totally support you in your big picture vision of success. So don't let this, you know, feeling kind of, or these stages kind of make you feel like held back. It's just more of an awareness so that you can get to your goals a lot faster. Let's start from the beginning, which is stage one. Stage one is your jewelry idea incubator. And stage one is really the first stage to becoming a jewelry brand superstar, because here you're really going to lay the groundwork of your brand to create a strong foundation for your business. And this is just the beginning where you can take your business ideas and build a solid business model while checking off some of the basic items that you need to get started. So this might include, you know, opening a separate bank account, making sure that you have a DBA if you need to get that where you live, uh, making sure that your corporate structure is set up the right way, whether you are deciding to become a sole proprietor or an LLC or an S Corp or something like that. You know, there's all different things that you need to do. Maybe if you decide to use business name, you want to research to make sure that your name isn't taken by someone else. So you're not like infringing on trademarks. (laughs) So there's a lot of different things that you need to sort of investigate in this initial phase. And a lot of people think it's, you know, right away starting to build a collection. And while you might have already been doing that in the beginning, that's not really the first step to starting a business. The first step to starting a business is to have these fundamental aspects in place and to make sure that, you know, your financials are in order and that you're that you're using like an accounting system that's actually going to grow with your business and not, you know, some janky spreadsheets and, you know, shoebox for your receipts. <laughs> I, I'm, truth be told, I still have a shoebox of receipts from 
2010 sitting in my closet. Uh, so it's not necessarily the worst method to file, but you know, you want to be a little bit organized with your stuff and set up like a foundation from the beginning so that as you start to grow, you know, you're covered. And, you know, some of these things, you know, like you might start as a sole proprietor or maybe in stage three or four, you decide to transition into an S corp because your sales get to the place where your, let's see, like your income makes sense to actually become a corporation. So there's different things to think about, but these are all things that you want to start thinking about from the beginning. And it also requires you sort of identifying what you stand for as a business and, you know, kind of creating like the initial stages of your simplified business plan, as I like to say. Stage two is all about creating your signature brand. And this is like one of my favorite stages. I feel like most of the designers in our community are probably entering Flourish and Thrive around the stage or maybe just a little bit before or beyond. But this is a really important stage. And, you know, we teach a lot of the fundamentals of this in our Laying the Foundation course. But it's also something that, you know, we support here in our Diamond Insiders as well. So, you know, you've kind of graduated from that incubator stage. You have some of the foundational things set up. Uh, This is really about nailing down what you want to be known for. So this is all about design, your brand, you know, your brand packaging and imaging and you know, the messaging around it. This is one of the most important stage and you're probably going to come back to this stage over and over and over again as you start to clarify your messaging for your brand. As you start to define your core values even more, as you start to, you know, really brand yourself as a designer, as you start to develop collections and, you know, kind of figure out what your signature look or signature style is or signature brand. You know, all these things are really tied together and this is where that cohesive, nature of building a brand sort of is incepted. And this is what you carry through beyond the rest of the stages. Stage three is all about gaining exposure for your jewelry brand, which I think is very, very important. This is where, you know, you got your signature brand sort of nailed down and you've kind of zeroed that in and it's time to start getting more exposure and sales. So a lot of times people in the signature brand stage in stage two are already making some sales here and there. And stage three, you're kind of making some sales here and there, but they're not consistent. So what we're trying to do as we move you from stage two to stage three is get that consistency of sales. Uh, It's all about starting to build momentum that will make you like that next unforgettable jewelry brand superstar. And it's really here where we focus on all forms of exposure for media and sales while leveraging the power of the relationships within your network. And this can be online or off. So a lot of our relationships might you know, not necessarily be like communicating with an email list it might actually be personal relationships that we have. You know, I always like to share this story. When I first started my jewelry business, I really am so grateful to my family because they were my biggest brand advocates in the beginning and my close circle of friends. You know, they would wear my jewelry. They would share it with their other, with their friends. In fact, you know, this is sort of a random sidebar, but my best friend wasn't even like, she didn't really into jewelry. She's super more classic jewelry gal. So she never really wore my jewelry, but she was like, one of my biggest brand advocates because she loved what I was doing, but she's more of like a diamond solitaire and pearl kind of girl. And that's not the kind of stuff that I really designed. But this is where that that sort of leveraging those relationships becomes really important. And I want to reiterate this because there is no one way to build a, a successful brand. It's your chance to test out what works for you. And then you can double down on those things, like I said earlier, to get more massive results. Because this is really, really important to you. This is like sort of your testing phase to see like, how you're going to sort of burst onto the jewelry scene and sort of accelerate that growth. But it does require this step-by-step process. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see designers doing is just try to copy or emulate what someone else is doing when it's not really in alignment with their brand. You know, and I think the best example is I love Instagram to grow your business. You know, we are huge fans of Instagram around here, but not for every business model is Instagram going to be the best you know, social media platform. Some of your clients might be hanging out more on Facebook than Instagram. So, you know, I don't think that there is one way, you know, some people might be able to easily capture 30, 40, 50,000 followers, but some people might struggle to never get more than 300. So I want to give you permission and let you know that there is no one way and that you get to test what works for you. But what I really encourage the designers and makers in our community to really focus on when they're in the stage is to really be clear and observant about what is working and what is not working and start to document that because that's the most important part of that piece of the puzzle. The next stage of jewelry business success is really about amplifying your exposure and sales. And this stage, you know, this is a really important stage for 
taking what you've learned in stage three and taking what you've discovered in stage three and then scaling that to the next level. And I know some of you might be grossed out by the term scale, but let me explain a little bit what I mean by that. Because every smart jewelry business cookie knows that ongoing exposure and sales is really a must in order to keep your business running consistently. And what we're all trying to do here is to get that consistency of sales and exposure so we don't have that those peaks and valleys of revenue coming in, right? So that we can pay ourselves on a consistent basis, so that we can take a salary or a draw from our business and it's not, you know, putting our bank accounts in negative, that there's extra money there, that there's profits there that you can actually pay yourself with. Those things are really important. So In this stage, you know, you might have moved on from figuring out what works for your brand. It's time to really amplify those results and skyrocket your profits. So it's going to get you to the next level. So you want to deep dive into strategies that are working while implementing your vision to move your brand forward. So this, you know, earlier I talked about our pretty little profits challenge. This is the stage where you can start to test, okay, so these things worked. What layer can I add on to really scale that and make it bigger? This is the stage where I feel like you know, testing great Facebook ad strategies or retargeting strategies can really help you grow and like maximize that same level of effort that you're doing, but just take it up a notch or to the next level, I think is the best way to put that. It's a very important stage for you guys. Like once you get here, this is where that scale starts, then that momentum really starts to build. And, you know, for some of you getting to stage four might mean that you just, just crossed the six figure mark. Or for some of you, it might mean that you crossed multiple six figures. It's not about money. It's about like sort of having these things dialed in in alignment with what's important to you. And for some of you, it might be a little bit less. You know, uh, my friend, Justin Crane, who's an amazing financial advisor, we have him come and speak to our Diamond Insiders and our Mastermind community quite often. And one of the questions that was asked in one on one of our calls a while back was something along the lines of, you know, what should designers who are making less than $50,000 a year be focused on? And he said sales. Like you need to get over that you know, six figure mark. And for some reason, for most of us, depending on where you live, if you're in the United States or in Europe or in Canada and to in a country that is very expensive to live in, a lot of times, you know, that that indicator because of the cost of the materials and the expense of running a jewelry business, that's sort of where you hit that tipping point of where you can successfully pay yourself consistently. And I think that's why he gives that that specific dollar amount there. I don't want you guys to be freaked out about that. It's really not that hard once you have this stuff dialed in and you're focused and your pricing's right and all that stuff and you're sort of working these stages and taking the step-by-step actions. It works when you're focused on that sales and generating revenue. Stage five is the earn more, work less business architecture. So now that you kind of move through that process of expanding on what's working, getting some consistent revenue in, maybe crossing that you know, whatever your business financial goal is and getting to that point where you're consistently paying yourself, this is where it's time to kind of get that, the business architecture really dialed in. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have, you know, implemented systems and structures in your business before this stage, but this is where those business systems and structures are going to become really important for you to kind of get your business working for you instead of against you. So a lot of designers reach out to me in our community and they ask like, Tracy, like, how do you do it? You have a brand that generates multiple six figures. Only 10% of your working time is spent on that business. How are you able to create a business that is consistently generating leads and consistently, you know, growing and you're, that you're consistently booking sales? You know, I've really had to step back even like if I even put like as much emphasis on that business, if I had more time to really grow the business, my sales, I would not be surprised if they had would surpass half a million dollars a year just with me and my very small production team. Because of the way my business is set up, I could easily run this business and generate that much revenue just with my production manager managing, you know, the systems and the production that was happening. I might need one more team member, like an executive assistant or something like that, to be working a little bit more full time to help manage the schedule. But at the end of the day, we have a system in place on how things go through the process and the funnel. And The most important part of stage five is to really get this stuff documented and to create your operations manual and to make sure that everything's accounted for. And my friend, Dan Martel, he's uh, in the tech space and he has sold several businesses, including Clarity FM. And he said something really powerful to me at a retreat once uh, that he was speaking at. And he said, 
it wasn't just to me, it was actually to the entire mastermind that we were in. But he said, I thought this was really fascinating because you think like when you're ready to sell a business that people are buying your business, but what they're really buying is your operations manual. And not that any of you are going to sell your business, but you know, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I am a huge fan of the E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. And being able to create a systematized business is really important if you want to stay in your creative zone. And I know that sounds like the antithesis of creativity, but the more structure you have in your business and the less like flying by the seat of your pants and putting out fires that you're doing on a daily day basis, the more creative time you have to really think about ideas or to design your collection and to spend more time in your zone of genius, which is probably for most of us designing jewelry. And this is why they say earn more, work less. And this is why we've sort of identified this stage as the earn more, work less business architecture, because you're really creating that architecture internally in your business to create the space so that you can be more creative. Because at this point in time, you know, hopefully your revenue is at a really comfortable stage that your things are kind of flowing easily. You're not stressed. You're not trying to figure as much out. You're really just like, work in the system, you know, so to speak. And things like it allows more time and freedom to focus on the things that you really want to do. And that might even include taking time off from your business. So when I got to the stage five, the first time in my business, I was terrified because I had booked a trip to India through the holidays. I knew that I was going to get back And three days later, I was going to be flying. I was going to get back from India. And three days later, I was going to be flying to New York to, or maybe it was five days later. What doesn't matter? Less than a week later, I was going to be flying to New York for the most important trade show of the year, which is the accessory circuit. It's always the first weekend in January. And this was back in the day when I was selling wholesale. And this was my most important trade show. And I was terrified to leave because we were still shipping uh, Christmas orders And we were finishing up our collection for the spring launch in January, and it wasn't done. And had it not been for having the systems and structures in place for my team to follow, I wouldn't have been able to go on that trip and completely detach for two weeks or three weeks, however long I was there, and, you know, take this like refreshing break. And it was pretty amazing. That was like really when the first time I'd ever put this, these systems to the test and, you know, trusted my team in a way like that. Because in India in 2004, (laughs) finding internet access was really, really hard. I mean, that was over 13 years ago or something when I went. And it's not like you could just like bring your computer and pick up some Wi-Fi. I had to go to an internet cafe that had dial-up service and it was super slow. And there were many times when I was locked out of my email because I couldn't access it. So, you know, it was really a crapshoot. Like they really needed to be able to handle the business without me. So this is, you know, regardless if you want to hire or not, this is sort of the stage when you probably start hiring multiple people in your business or creating a system of outsourcing like I have with my production manager, Farah and the team of jewelers that we work with. So it's just really the two of us in my business. It's not many more people than that besides my jewelry contractors who I work who actually make the jewelry for me. So you can do it too. And then stage six is really about expanding beyond an ultimate success. So you've got your business architectural map kind of nailed down. It's worked out. Now it's time to put all that structure to work for you. This stage is about scale. So for some of you, scale might look like, you know, stepping back a little bit and be able to, being able to ship five rings a month instead of, you know, one, (laughs) or maybe it's going from shipping, you know, 20 units a month to a hundred units or beyond, you know, like when I was at the stage, the first time we were at the level of shipping about a thousand units a month. And had I not had this stuff sort of in place, it would have been really tough to do that. So scale is your vision of ultimate success. And that's really kind of get you to the sweet spot of where selling and exposure and business become a little bit easier. And all your efforts are working to grow your business in alignment with your values and your dreams. And so this is super important. Your leadership skills and communications are really critical to the success of your mission at this point. So you're ready to put support in place and get into that uh, sort of 40,000 foot view of your design business so that you're really thinking about big picture stuff a lot more rather than like working in your business. Like you really step into that role of CBO. And I want to remind you guys, like this has nothing to necessarily do with you know, doing tons and tons of volume uh, while it could mean that it's really about getting to a place where you're thinking strategically about business development and growth, and you're ready to kind of take your business to the next level, whatever that means to you. And stage seven is all about mastering it all. So you might 
you know, get to this point in your business. And I hope that you all do where you just feel like a badass. You're like popping the champagne every weekend. You're like, you know, I'm good. My business is good. And I can, you know, work in Italy for three weeks and my team's got this. And, you know, I have consistent revenue coming in and my business is easy and it just works for me. And that's ultimately like, I think we all want to kind of get to that mastery stage, but this is the point where it's important not to get lazy and that you don't rest on your laurels, that you're still continuing to like focus on business development and growth and where you get to really enjoy and reap the benefits of all your hard work. So remember that you deserve it and that complacency is the death of a strong business. You can't get complacent in this stage. Now is your time to master more ninja techniques, develop strategic partnerships, and share your success, excuse me, with your team and your creativity all around the world. And this is where advanced e-commerce strategies kind of come in. When I think of businesses like this, I think of myself, but then I also think of businesses that are set up to scale. Like my friend Ben is like super successful in e-commerce. Like he's there. But you know, this mastery stage can really be relevant to basically any type of business and any type of volume. It doesn't have to be high volume because I feel like I'm in the mastery stage and I don't ship that much volume at all, like maximum five pieces a month these days. So mastery is really about staying on top of your game, feeling like you have it figured out, not getting complacent and really, you know, surrounding yourself with an awesome community. And with that being said, I wanted to just have you take a moment to sort of identify where you are in business. And if you aren't quite sure, I can, we have this amazing assessment that I'm going to tell you about. So you can learn a little bit more about where you are in business right now and figure out how you can get to your next level of success, which I think is really important. So if it's hit or miss with sales and you're getting tons of views and likes, but you really need to help with getting consistent sales, if you're someone who's in that space, or if you tell yourself that you're going to get it done by the end of the day, but it just gets pushed to tomorrow's list and you need some support and accountability, or you're someone who's really busy when you get exposure, but you can't figure out how to stay there, especially online. You often maybe even think if only you could pick the brain of your favorite designer or read the mind of that store owner that you're trying to contact, then you would know exactly what you're doing wrong and how to fix it. Or maybe you feel isolated because, well, running a jewelry business can be lonely and your friends and family just don't understand your challenges. Like, have you felt any of those things before? I'm sure that you probably have. Um, I felt them many times before in my history of running a jewelry business which is exciting for me because I'd like to present to you something that's really exciting that we're doing. Uh, We have open enrollment for our Diamond Insiders just for this week. Um, If you're listening to this after May 5th, I'm sorry that you'll have to get on the waiting list if this is something interesting to you. Uh, But I wanted to share that on this on today's podcast because I think it's a really important community for a couple of reasons, because it has everything that you need inside to go from barely keeping up to feeling accomplished with daily support and productivity tools. The coolest part of this and the way the membership is really designed is to take you from where you are and help you get to where you want to be. And the members who have been in the Diamond Insiders for more than a year have gone from scattered to focused growth by taking the right steps based on their stage in business. And that landed them the exposure and sales that they needed to feel in control and more confident, which is huge because I don't know about you, but I feel like a lot of us like jumped into business and we're like floating on a boat without a rudder and we have no control over that boat and we need to get back in control so we can feel this sense of accomplishment. This is the only membership out there designed to really meet you at the stage in business that you're at right now to help you grow from having a business idea to earning multiple five or six figures or even more because I really want you guys to dream big. And you can do all of this as an independent jewelry designer and grow at a really authentic pace that works for you. So if you follow these exact steps in our proven core success path that walk you through these seven stages in business, you're going to go from where you are to where you want to be and learn how to track what matters most to measure your success. And this is really what I love about the Diamond Insiders. It's really about support and accountability and getting the systems and structures in place in your business and, you know, feeling the support of this amazing community that we've created in there. So this is very different than some of our other groups that we have. We have our free group, which is the Jewelry Business Incubator, which is really a peer-driven group. The Diamond Insiders is also about peer support, but even beyond that, it's really about getting the support of our success coaches. We have several success coaches that uh, work for Flourish and Thrive who are there, who are actually your peers who are, who have been there and done that, I guess is the best way to do it. So they've already walked a walk and they've, you know, implemented a lot of these things in their business to see major success. So 
Our success coaches are amazing. We have accountability circles to keep you on track. And then we help you stay focused on implementation because we know that just learning information is not good enough. You actually have to put that stuff into practice. And this is the only platform that does this. It's not a course. We do have trainings involved in the Diamond Insiders, but it's not a course. Like we're not going to give you homework every single day of the week that you need to get done. It's really about taking what you've learned and putting that into action so you can grow your business and get to the next stage. And what we've done on our success path is we've really created step-by-step like checklists, basically to say like, once you checked it off, all right, move on to the next step, move on to the next step. So it's really this process of simple steps to keep you or prevent you from being overwhelmed in your business and allow you to never feel alone and to be fully supported wherever you are. And I just want to reiterate, this is not a course. It is not a course. It's a business platform designed to keep you moving in the right direction and a place where you can go for daily support to help you on your journey to success, which is really the most important thing. So if this sounds like something that's really interesting to you, I would love for you to check out our Diamond Insiders. Uh, Enrollment is closing on May 5th at 1159 Eastern time. You can check that out by going over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash diamond insiders. That's flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash diamond insiders and check out, you know, just how the membership works. You can see some success stories there. You can watch a few videos and hear about people's experiences. You can learn more about our coaches. You can learn a lot more about what's going to roll out. And if you decide to enroll, the cool part is you get to take our self-assessment quiz so you can determine where you are in your state and what stage you're in in your jewelry business, and then start to determine the steps that you need to take in order to get to that next stage or your next level of success. So I want to remind you that success looks differently to everyone. For some of you, it might be a lifestyle dream or a vision. For others of you, it might be just flexibility to raise your family and have some extra cash coming in. And for people like me, it might be the flexibility to be able to leave and travel the world, you know, while still having a business that supports a thriving income, which is cool. So uh, wherever you are, hope you join us. If not, uh, you know, no worries. It's just something that we're offering. You know, we are really, someone was asking me this the other day, you know, we're really committed to being disruptors in the jewelry industry. And just like, you know, Spotify almost put Apple out of business. We're not necessarily trying to put anyone out of business, but we're trying to really be ahead of the curve to help you thrive in business and get that level of support that other communities, memberships, people can't give you. So, you know, stick with us. We're committed to your success and we're really looking forward to watch you flourish and thrive. So if you're interested, once again, head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash diamond insiders. And if not, you know, I wish you the best on your business journey. I'll be here again next week, sharing with you some really amazing information. So until next time, take care, everyone. Have an awesome day and I'll chat with you soon.